In this video, we're going to take a look at some mathematical equations that we can do in Java. From ucjava.com homepage, I'm going to click on 32IT205, uh, Variables and Types, and I'm going to go to Mathematical Operations. <clears throat> now, we've seen several of these operators before. Addition is the plus, subtraction is the minus, division is the slash on the question mark key, multiplication is the asterisk, and modulo is the percent symbol. Be careful with that. It's not a percentage. Modulo means the remainder of division. This is one of those operators that you use once every three years, but when you need it, it's the one thing that will work. So um, modulo is just one to keep in your toolkit. Now we also have these binary operations that we saw in our project earlier. So if I go over, uh, we see gallons of gas equals gallons of gas minus gallons consumed. And I mentioned we can write it that way. We could also say gallons of gas minus equals gallons consumed. Uh, we can write it this way as well, which means just take the gallons of gas value, subtract from it the number of gallons that have been consumed. Okay. Uh, and that's exactly what I did down here with odometer plus equals distance. That's effectively the same as odometer equals odometer plus distance. Basically the same thing. Uh, so we have these operators. We can do it with the plus, the minus, the uh, multiplication, and division. All of those are fine. Okay, uh, now we want to take a look at some mathematical operators. Uh, sorry, we want to take a look at the order of operations. So this is the order of operations if we have a compound statement in Java. So if we have a really long string or a really long series of operations, it's going to follow, and this, this, is, this is fairly complicated here, but it's going to follow a principle that we learned back in middle school, BODMAS. So brackets, order power, divide, multiply, addition, and subtraction. So uh, it's gonna work left to right, but it's going to do everything within brackets first, then everything that's order of operations, then divide, then multiply, then addition, and then subtraction. So addition and subtraction will be the last thing that will happen if we have a long equation. Let me run back to the first program that we made uh, in our first week of class. So I'm going to go here to hello, and I'm going to go to greetings. Okay, and let's try a few things out. If I say double uh, value equals 1 plus 2, and then SOUT, okay, system out print line, value equals plus value. Shouldn't be any surprise what's going to happen here <clears throat> when I save and run this. Oops. That's what we want. Sorry, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> So I run, and we see that the value was 3.0, not a big surprise. Now here's where, here's where we have to think a little bit. Value equals 1 plus 2 times 5. Okay, is that going to be 3 times 5, or is that going to be 1 plus 10? Okay, let's find out. Remember, left to right, but we do a multiplication first before we do addition. So let's see what we get. We get the value of 11 because even though it works left to right, it multiplied these two together and then added one. Okay, let's make that 10, and let's say two times 10 plus two times five. So what I'm expecting to see here is two times 10 is 20, two times five is 10, 20 plus 10 is 30, because it's gonna do the multiplication first going left to right, and then it's gonna do the addition. So uh, 20 plus 10 is 30. If order of operations didn't matter, it would be 2 times 10 would be 20, plus 2 is 22, uh, times 5 would give us about 120 if I'm doing the math right, right in my head. So we see that the precedence of the multiplication operator over the addition operator is important. Okay, and sure enough, we see 30, because 2 times 10 is 20, 2 times 5 is 10, add them together, we get 30. Okay, what if we wanted to change the order of operations? If we wanted to do that, we would use curly braces, and we would say, do whatever is in the curly braces first. Remember BODMAS, brackets, which includes our curly braces, do that first before division, multiplication, addition, or subtraction. So we're going to say 10 plus 2 is 12. 
Then we're going to say 12 times 2 is 24. Then we're going to say 24 times 5, uh, and forgive me again, I'm doing this in my head, that's going to be about, uh, what, 100 and, um, 24 times 5 is going to be, uh, what, 100 and, I want to say 118 if I'm doing it right, somewhere in that 100 teens, uh, in that 100 teens area. Let's see. 120. Okay, it was pretty close, but uh, let's make sure that that adds up as I think it should add up. So we're going to do the 10 times 2 first, or sorry, the 10 plus 2. Whoops. Okay, clear that out. 10 plus 2 is 12. Times 2 is 24. Times 5, yeah, 120. Yeah, that does come up. So I was at a couple numbers off, but uh, we see this is the order that the computer was thinking. The 10 plus 2 in the parens times 12, because we're working left to right after we satisfy the order of operations, that gives us 24, times 5 gives us 120. Okay, so this, let's say, this is what we learned in algebra or in math back in the day, and, and everything holds pretty much true still in Java. But one really interesting thing is this. Do you see that we have overloaded the plus operator down on line 23? And that is that the plus can used can be used not just to add numbers together, but to concatenate strings. But we have something very interesting here, which is value is a string, and then value on the right is a number. If we see a string on one side and a number on the other, what it will do automatically is convert that number to a string, and then basically attach it to the end of the string that we see here. Okay, we know right now the value of this variable called value is 120. What if I said value, uh, value plus value, and then I said plus one? What do you expect? Would this give us 121? Given that the value variable has 120, what would value plus one give us? You might be surprised. Let's take a look. It gives us 120.01. Now, how did that happen? Well, it's not that it added 0 0.01 to this variable called value. What it did is it's operating left to right. And remember the rule I just told you. If I have a string here, and then I have a number on the right, it's going to convert the number to a string and then concatenate them together. So if we just look at this, it's going to change the value variable, uh, basically in memory, change it to a string, append it to the end of this string, now we have a string. Now working left to right, this is the next operation we're going to do. And what's the type on the left? A string. What's the type on the right? On the right? A number. So it's not going to mathematically add value plus one, it's going to concatenate them as strings. Let's try one more thing. Let me just make it one, 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 and let's try one more thing again, see if we can visualize it. You see now, one, two, zero, uh, point zero and then one 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 it's showing this as a string and it has just taken the string one two zero point zero and concatenated onto the end of that the string one 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 so we have to be careful with this and i'll tell you right now there's a quiz question that's going to deal with this exact subject so uh, be a little bit careful with this but if we wanted to see let's take a look at another view another perspective what if we actually did want to add those in line well, remember, we can change the order of operations by using parentheses, because parentheses have a higher precedence than the plus, the minus, the multiplication, or the division. So parentheses will evaluate first. Now that I've added parentheses, let's try this experiment again. Now you see the value is 1231.0, which is the sum of 1111 and the number 120.0. So you see, now it actually does the math here first, and after doing the math, then it concatenates with the value called, with the, uh, sorry, with the string called value. Honestly, what's the moral of the story here? The moral of the story is don't write code that looks like this. What I would do, this is not very readable. Uh, if this were in a code review, I would not be very happy with it. What I would do is I would make another temporary variable that says maybe double enhanced value equals value plus 111 and then say value plus enhanced value and you see by breaking this into a separate step it's a lot more clear it's a lot more readable um, 
it, it it's not going to have any significant impact on performance or memory in the long run. So the clarity is well worthwhile to be able to have something that's readable, good variable names, and you can very clearly see it's going to mathematically add these here, and then it's going to concatenate these down here. So don't get cute and try to nest everything. Uh, keep documentation in mind. On the other hand, keep in mind that you might be working with someone who didn't go to our great program at UC and someone who possibly uses a different way to, uh, you know, maybe put a whole bunch of mathematical expressions all on one line. So, you know, the code that you're looking at might not always be the code that you wrote. Okay, so we took a look at order of operations. Remember BODMOS, that sounds like a good quiz question for me. In the next video, we're going to take a look at debugging. I'll see you there.